Hi there, my name is Ricardo Torres, I'm a senior front-end software engineer at Netcentric, and this is a follow-up on the front-end coffee break episode one, where Chucho and I talked about how to create a blog, why do you need a blog, what is a blog, and today I want to show you two ways of creating a blog using GitHub. GitHub allows you to very easily create a blog either by, you know, just UI or going to terminal and doing more stuff. There's two parts of this tutorial. The first part would be for non-technical profiles, somebody who doesn't know how to code, doesn't want to mess with installing anything on the machines. That's the first part. If you are more techy, you want to skip to the second part where we're going to use Hugo to build also a site and host it on, on GitHub, all for free, very easy, very straightforward. So uh, the first part would be using Jekyll. Jekyll is built on Ruby. You don't need to worry about that. If you look at the website, it has commands and things you have to install. Do not worry. As I said, the first part is just for non-techy people. What I want you to do is to go to Google and search Jekyll now. Either go to the repo directly or if you find the website, go there. Either way, I want you to end up on GitHub. I assume you already have a GitHub account. You are logged in. And then you want to fork this repository. Go here in the corner, press fork. What it's going to do is first show us a screen where we need to define the repository name. By default, Jekyll, sorry, Jekyll, uh, GitHub, it's going to give me a free subdomain. In my case, my username, kikoto.github.io slash the name of the repo. So in my case, I'm going to just call it, call it Hugo blog. That's fine. And then create fork. The fork, if you don't know how it works, simply takes what this repo has, all the files, into my new repo in my account. Basically, this repo has all the configurations, files, and even a theme for you to kickstart a Jekyll block without having to worry about, okay, how do I configure it? What files do I need? What's the folder structure? No need, no worries. As I said, we want just click, click, click UI and be done with it. Perfect. So this is done. What we need to do now is um, just write the name of the repo. You can just either copy it manually or go here, select it. You want to find in the in the files here, you want to find the config yalm underscore config, click it and edit the file. Scroll down and find yourself the base URL property. Here you can read the comment. Basically, it's asking us, okay, if you have a repo slash name of the repo, cool, done. Let me update the file. Excellent. So now how it works is um, Nothing happens. <laughs> Nothing should happen. We need to tell GitHub first that this is a Jekyll repo and we want this repo to be built. How do you do that? You go to settings. There's a page here called pages. And then we select, okay, what is the source for my GitHub pages? In this case, it's going to be my master branch. Master branch and what folder? Just the root, save. As you save, GitHub is going to show you what's the final public URL to the internet. This is the one, let me open it. And this is already working because I have it cached on my machine. Sorry about that, guys. I did a test before. Anyway, um, yeah, so this, this is the URL. Let me go to actions. Basically, um, what's going to happen is every time you do a change on the repository, like adding a new post or change the configuration to change the, the block name, whatever it is, GitHub is going to detect that change and fire their own internal scripts to build the site. Again, you don't have to worry about how it works. Just know that in the Actions tab, you have something going on. And when, whenever it finishes, we can refresh the page and we would see changes. OK, so how would you actually, once this deploys, how do you add new content? So go to Code. And then for Jekyll, there is an underscore post folder. We already have one post. If you edit that, you will see how it looks like. Uh, let me edit it. A post has just two parts. The per first part would be the metadata, where you define, in this case, the layout. There can be many layouts. By default, we would just say post, in our case, title of the blog post, and then the content using Markdown. If you don't know how Markdown is, how it works, how you write the syntax, just Google Markdown, and you will find how to do headings, how to do list, links, whatever it is. So let's try to create a new post. So here, I'll add file, create file, Sure, we add uh, uh, the year first, month, day, and then you add the URL you want your post to have. In this case, my post. .md, which is the extension for Markdown files. As we saw before, 
we need to add three dashes for the metadata, layout, post, title, my new post, close the metadata, and then you start writing. So an H1 would be like this, and then list another item. Perfect. So just commit the file. And now we should wait a little bit for GitHub Actions to take notice and, and build it. One thing you should do is you have to go to config and just, you know, personalize the block a little bit. And for default, you have your name called your name. Of course, you would just edit the file, change these values as you see fit, avatars, social links, whatever it is. The theme that has on your repo, the, 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 the theme that you're using has all these features. So um, feel free to change it. If you don't know what something is, just don't change it. <laughs> it's better to be safe than sorry. Cool, let's go to actions. Perfect, it's already building the page or the post I just created. The idea is that you write text files, right? Markdown files are basically text files, and those text files are converted to, into HTML. There's no database. Your database is actually just text files, which is fantastic. The end result is a fast website that has very low latency. You don't have to worry about backend uh, systems or backend languages. You simply write text files, you press commit or update, you are done. All right, so it's here. Let me refresh. Cool, so my new post is here and it's live. You are done. You already have your blog on the internet. Congratulations. All right, for the second part of the tutorial, we're gonna go a little bit technical. We wanna install things. And this is for more techie, front-end engineers, back-end engineers. You wanna get your hands dirty and, and customize the output of your blog. Okay, so we're gonna use Hugo. Hugo, as they claim to be, is the world's fastest framework for building websites. It is really fast. The backend is built in Go, and you will see in a minute that it's really, really fast to build uh, compared to, to Jekyll. It has many features like multilingual, and I mean, it's really powerful, really powerful. Um, on the Netsendek website, we, no, sorry, not the, the, the website on GitHub, we use uh, Hugo for fetching uh, our repositories, our stars. We even have a, a block inside it. We fetch posts from the Netcentric block, which is built in AM. So, so yeah, uh, we used it because we really love it and, and you should too. So first few things first, we create a repo, go to GitHub, new repo, Hugo block, we create. Then, I mean, as you see fit, you want to check out via terminal, you want to check out via graphical interface. I'm a graphical interface kind of guy, so let me do that. Uh, clone, find Hugo, Hugo block, right exists. Fine, hit block two, doesn't matter. Okay, uh, open it in Visual Studio Code or your preferred ID, doesn't really matter. First thing first, you need to install Hugo on your machine, right? The, no longer you will have the built-in like Jekyll we had before in GitHub, but you actually need to install it uh, on your machine to, to see it happening, right? So how do you do that? If you're using Mac OS, um, you can simply use Homebrew, which is fantastic for installing uh, packages. If not, uh, if you're on Windows or Linux, just go to the Hugo site. They have a great documentation on how to install it for different uh, operating systems. In my case, Mac OS, so simply I would go to the terminal, go brew, Hugo, install. I'm not going to do that because I already have it and it takes a while. So let me just confirm that I have it installed. So Hugo version. Yeah, it's here. So first things first, how do we tell Hugo to install a new site? Very easy. So Hugo, new site. And then the path to or the folder you want to create. We are already on the, the Git folder, so I want to do it right here. And let's see. Oh, it fails. Okay. It says it already exists and it's complaining about it. No worries. Just run it again. Dash dash force and you are set. Okay. So if you see now the files here, it already created the skeleton for a Hugo block. We can already launch this. Let's, let's do it. Hugo server. It took one millisecond. Okay, I have no pages, no, no, no block, but still one millisecond to be ready. Amazing. Uh, let me copy the the local host server. It just spawned. Open it, and as you would expect, it's empty. Even the source, it's empty. It's empty because we haven't told Hugo anything. We haven't written any layout, any blog post, nothing. So here now you have to do a choice. You either learn how to create the layouts using Hugo, like you know, you could go layouts and say, okay, so home layout.html, you would create uh, the HTML 
h1 hello world save it has auto reload so let me go back refresh here we go this is just the html i just written um, but this is hardcore like this is you would have to learn how to create the templates looping through posts paginations it's a little bit hardcore uh, we don't want to do that it just takes too much time we want to um, use a theme as a starting point so let me take this this file home file and we're going to use simply the uh, theme from the official documentation you can use whatever theme you want how do you add a theme simply it's a git submodule so the command would be git submodule add and then uh, simply um, define the git url and the folder themes.aranke let's do it okay it's growing the repository fantastic and now when i open the themes i have a folder aranke and then a bunch of stuff so the theme already has the layouts, um, images, everything just to make it work, right? So if you want to change something, you could go in here and change uh, the templates, like, okay, the post list works like this, right? Uh, it uses a special kind of syntax for the templates. Uh, again, let's not worry about that for now. Let's simply rerun Hugo server. It took two milliseconds now, amazing. Open this again, refresh, and nothing happens. Why nothing happens? Because we haven't told Hugo to use this theme. How do you do that? You simply go to config, and you write theme equals, and the name of the theme, Ananke in my case. Save. It already has revealed it. Refresh. Here you go. So <laughs> we have the now the site built locally. Uh, again, we haven't conf like configured any like a special output, or we haven't changed the CSS or JavaScript. That you would do afterwards. But then, I mean, I just want to show you uh, the, the basics here. Uh, okay, we're done. So now let's create content. Like same thing we did for Jekyll. We would create post. In this case, it's like a category for Hugo. It's a little bit different in terms of where to store the files, but um, the syntax is just the same. Markdown files in my case. So new post. Sure. Dot markdown. And then same thing. You would use the metadata. metadata in this case, three dashes. Same thing as Jekyll. Uh, title. They prefer a string. So new post. Uh, they want a date, not a string. So 2022, 0101. And then you can write it as a draft uh, or not. In my case, just publish it directly. I want to see it live. Close metadata. Hello world. New post. Save. It's already here. Click here, new post, and we have it. So um, yeah, that's it. That's how you create content. <laughs> Super easy. So okay. First part is done. How do you actually deploy this to GitHub Pages? Easy. GitHub Actions is super powerful. If you haven't played with it, let's do it right now. I have a, a workflow ready for you. Let me let me copy and paste it and go line by line so I explain to you what's going on. To create a GitHub Actions workflow, you create first a folder called github.github. Inside it, there's a new folder to be created called workflows, and then a new workflow called whatever you want. In my case, build.yalm file. Let me paste this and make it a little bit bigger for you to read. So how does it work? First, you name the, the workflow. You tell it that, please, on every push to the main branch, I want this workflow to be triggered. OK, so we do that. Then you specify the jobs. In my case, OK, I say my job is called deploy. I want it to run on Ubuntu 2020, uh, 2004. <laughs> Concurrency it is for doing um, single jobs. Don't worry about that. Uh, steps, then you define what's going to happen. First things first, of course, you want the GitHub Actions to check out your code from the, from the repo. In this case, we use this action, action slash checkout. And you need this thing. You need the submodules flag to true because you already added a submodule when you added the, the theme, right? What else? Um, set up Hugo. This is another action for setting up Hugo on the on that machine on GitHub Actions. Um, you can specify the version. In my case, let me go back here, stop the watcher. See version 98. Okay, let, let me update that. Sure, why not? 98.0. So we know for sure that what we have locally, uh, we're going to have later on, on GitHub Actions. Extended true, that's a flag for Hugo to have extra features. Uh, have it on by default, doesn't hurt. What else? Uh, new step called build. And now that's the Hugo command for building the site and minifying stuff. Great. Last step would be to deploy these changes to GitHub pages. So we name it deploy, we use this action, and this definition here, no worries, just copy and paste it, and you are you are set. Uh, public directory, public, that's what Hugo is going to 
it's gonna generate when we when we run it right here in the build and this action simply is gonna move this to to the other branch you will see in a minute let me save this file let me open again the graphical graphical interface here awesome let's commit everything so yeah version one we are ready publish all right let's go back to the repo refresh awesome we have it here so now in theory we should go to the GitHub actions yeah so we see already that the workflow we created is already being triggered right let's see what happens let's go here it's gonna fail uh, most most probably you have to go to settings and you have to tell the workflows can read and write your repo so go to actions scroll down to general and then down down here to workflow permissions and you want to have this on read and write permissions work, work, workflows have read and write permissions in the repository for all scopes click save let me go back to actions and certainly it failed so let's rerun this now that we've changed the, the settings yes we run the field jobs and you will see that it's really fast to build what's taking what's going to take more time is to actually have the the runner available like the server available for us to to run the thing but when this is available this is going to fly and you'll see in a minute if it doesn't refresh sometimes you need to actually do it manually okay it's done four seconds two seconds zero seconds zero seconds deploying it's going to take five seconds amazing we're done okay so go back to code and you will see now that you have a new branch called GitHub Pages. This branch has the generated output from Hugo, right? HTMLs, yeah, the same like XML, everything already uh, good for you. So again, the same thing we did for, for Jekyll. You go to settings and you tell to GitHub to please deploy that branch to the GitHub Pages. So scroll down to Pages. Okay, the source for the GitHub Pages is gonna be GitHub Pages. And that's the name of the branch, and then just root save. This is the thing. Let me have it here. So not found as we expected before. We need to give it some time. Go to actions, and same thing as Jekyll. We're already seeing how GitHub has fired their GitHub Pages script to build the the whole thing and deploy it to that URL in a minute. Yeah. So so. Ooh, Hugo is really powerful. I recommend you to, to take a look at it because um, you can either go crazy with the stuff or just be minimal, have minimal CSS, minimal JavaScript, no JavaScript. You control everything. And you really, if you are interested in web performance or how to like to be your, your sandbox for testing stuff, it's, it's great. It's great. Refresh. And that's it. Doesn't work. <laughs> Why not? Because we need to tell Hugo that we are on a subfolder. The same thing we did for, for um, Jekyll, we need to do here. So I'm, let me copy the, the full URL, go back to the code, and find the config. In the config, you see the base URL is example.org, no bueno. Let's go here and change it to this thing and commit the file. Locally, it's gonna, it's gonna work just fine, it's gonna work just fine, but for building it for production, um, you, gotta, you gotta add the, the subfolder. Otherwise, it assumes it's on the, on the root of the domain, uh, if you had a custom domain, which you can also do, just check the documentation on GitHub for how to add a custom domain. Uh, you know, pointing your DNS to to here, all those steps. Um, you would you would go f with a, with a root base URL, but in this case, because I have a, a subfolder, uh, then I have to specify it. Let me go back to actions. Okay, so the build for my changes uh, already happened. It only took 20 seconds, and now it's again building the GitHub pages. Let's see here, okay, finish building. Should take a second to, to deploy again. And we should see the thing in action. All right. Deploying. Cool, let me refresh. That's it, now the assets are really pointing to, we can see it here, terminal, oh, CSS. So, subfolder. So Perfect, then you are done. You already have your site published and then you can start customizing. Uh, that's it for you today. Um, I hope you like it. I hope I encourage you to start your own blog using these tools or other tools. Feel free to leave a comment if you have other suggestions or ideas. And if you like what you see, just you know, hit like and subscribe. Uh, more web development tutorials will come soon. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. See ya.